question for you. If you had to pick the single most important aspect of post-processing and photo editing, what would you pick? That's a question that was posed to me recently and honestly left me kind of puzzled. My head was spinning a little bit just trying to figure out the best way to answer that question and I, I don't really think there is a right or wrong way to answer it, but nevertheless, great question. And I'm sure you already know the way that I answered the question just based off of the, uh, the title of this video, but I wanted to wrap a little bit of context around exactly why I think that contrast is the most important aspect in photo editing. For starters, contrast affects contrast. Contrast affects exposure, it affects your white points, your black points, it affects uh, your highlights, your shadows, contrast affects color, and frankly, there's probably a couple other things that I'm forgetting to mention, but at the end of the day, I could not find one other single item that affected as many different things as contrast did. And that led me to the decision that, you know what, maybe contrast really is king, and maybe that is the most important aspect of, uh, of photo editing. And that's the topic of this week's video, is to discuss the five different ways you can enhance contrast in your landscape photos using Lightroom. So to jump right into it, the very first way, of course, in the basic panel at the very top is the contrast slider. Now, the way the slider works is it darkens down the darker midtones of your image, and it also lightens the lighter midtones in your image. Now, pay, play, uh, sorry, <laughs> pay close attention, easy for me to say, to the histogram up here, and watch what happens when we remove all the contrast from this image. See how it contracts? Now, watch what happens when we add contrast to this image. See how it expands? And we'll go back and forth. It retracts and expands, retracts, and expands. And that's a very common theme that you're going to notice throughout this entire video. In any image, whenever we remove contrast, you'll notice that the histogram retracts. And then whenever we add contrast to an image, you'll notice that the histogram expands. So pay attention to that as we kind of go throughout these examples. But for this, uh, for the contrast slider, it's very basic, it's very simple. This image right here, all these images that we're gonna uh, discuss today, they're all raw, straight out of camera. The only edit I've done to any of these is just um, update the white balance. But for this, it's a very flat image. I'm gonna, I would, I would put in a quite a bit of contrast for this. If I was only going to use the contrast slider for this image, I would bring it up probably somewhere to right around 70. But as you can see, it does a great job. This is uh, the before and then this is after. So before, after. Very basic uh, slider, works very well. It's, it's kind of a no frills uh, contrast slider. So you, you, get, you get what you pay for. It works, it does exactly what it says it's gonna do. Now the second approach is by using the, the black point. So the black and white point, except you're not gonna really use the white point, you're really only gonna focus on the black point. This image right here is a perfect example for it because there's a lot of black tones in the volcanic rock along the shoreline right here. So the way the black slider works, is if you increase the blacks, you're lightening all the black tones in your image. And you can notice right through here that the black shoreline is now, doesn't have that same deeper black tone to it, it's much lighter. And if we bring the blacks all the way down, you'll notice that the shoreline is, is almost completely black in many areas. But if you bring it down to a reasonable point, so for this image, I would say somewhere probably right around here, you can notice exactly how much contrast that that actually added to the scene. So let me toggle it off. So, whoops, this is where we started right here. And this is if we decrease the blacks. So this is where we started. And this is if we decrease the black. So that's another really quick way to add contrast to your photograph is just by decreasing the blacks. And look what happened to the histogram up here. So this is where we started right here. And if we increase the blacks, which is basically removing contrast from your scene. See how the contra see how the uh, the histogram retracts a little bit. Now watch what happens when we decrease the blacks, introducing more contrast. See how the histogram spreads out, back and forth, back and forth. So that's the second way is by using the actual black point slider. Now the third way is by using the clarity adjustment. And I know a lot of times you might not think of the, the clarity tool as a means of adding contrast to an image, but it, it's a fantastic way to do it. And the clarity tool actually adds something called, I've heard it called a hundred different things, micro contrast, edge contrast, refined contrast, localized contrast. But what it does, the clarity tool is actually looking for edges within your scene. And Lightroom identifies an edge by looking for pixels 
that are say a dark pixel and a very light pixel that are touching one another, that are very close to one another, Lightroom is gonna think that that's an edge. And when you turn up the clarity slider, Lightroom is going to darken the darker side of that edge and lighten the lighter side of that edge, ultimately giving the illusion of additional clarity and detail and sharpness of your overall photograph. And clarity is also amazing at, at introducing texture to an image as well. And this photograph is perfect. I love how the, uh, the, the rising tide coming in and out here carved these nice little patterns into the image, but the overall image right now is completely flat. And if we add some clarity to it, you'll notice that it did add some contrast as well. And I'll zoom in a little bit and you can really see the texture. I mean, look at it. This is where we started and then we add clarity. You can almost just feel the sand through the screen. I, I love that aspect of it. It really makes an image pop. But it's very subtle. Let me zoom out again. But if you actually zoom in, if you look right here, you see this white edge here or lighter edge, and then you have a darker edge right through here. Watch what happens when we turn this clarity all the way up you'll notice that the wider edge brightens and this darker edge darkens. And I'll do it again, all the way up. And that's ultimately, that's exactly how the contrast slider works, is Lightroom is looking for those edges and it's gonna make the darker edge darker and the lighter edge lighter, giving that illusion of more detail and clarity. And that's kind of that micro contrast or edge contrast you might hear people talk about. So using the clarity slider is a great way to add very localized contrast to the edges of your photograph. But as with anything, you definitely wanna be careful with the clarity slider. If you go too, too overboard, you can introduce haloing, much like if you over sharpen an image. So you don't wanna to go too far overboard with clarity. And it's not, it's not really a tool that you want to use as your sole means of adding contrast to a photograph. I, I hope that makes sense. Now, something else that's cool before I, before I jump to the next one, Dialing in negative clarity is also pretty interesting as well because it has a nice softening effect to a photograph. This is not a good image to do it on, but I'll show you. If we take it down to negative 100, see how soft the image is? And plus, look what happened to our histogram up here. See how contracted it is? And look what happens when we expand it, or when we introduce more clarity, which is ultimately adding more contrast to the image. So there it is, retracted with no contrast. Here's more contrast, and you can see the histogram expand. But decreasing clarity, I like the look that it gives on some images because it, it kind of provides like a soft ethereal look to an image or a painterly look. And certain photographs it works well on, this is definitely not one it, that it works on, but maybe playing around with negative con uh, clarity values, negative 10, negative 20 sometimes, just to take a little bit of that bite out of a particular photograph is a, another pretty neat approach as well. Now, the fourth way to update contrast in Lightroom is by using the dehaze slider. And once again, much like clarity, you probably don't ever think about dehaze as a means of adding contrast, but it is a very interesting way of doing it. And much like clarity, you don't wanna rely on the dehaze slider as your sole means of adding contrast, but it definitely does add contrast. This example right here is a phenomenal example of it. As you can see, there is a lot of haze in this photograph. And if we turn this up, you can see that it, Lightroom does a great job of cutting right through that haze, but it also added a lot of contrast and punch, and it really increased the vibrancy of the greens in this photograph. And I'll show you again. I mean, it does a, it, it does a really good job in this image right here. And you can also dial in negative dehaze sometimes. I've done that before where you wanna create a little bit more additional atmosphere or provide or create the illusion of additional fog or mist. So going negative 10, negative 15 on dehaze sometimes will do that. This image already has a ton of haze in it, so you definitely don't need to add any more, but that is another creative way you can use the dehaze tool. But the dehaze tool absolutely adds contrast to your photograph. You wanna be careful when you use this tool though, because if you use a lot of dehaze, you know, positive 30 or 40 or in higher, and then you add contrast using the contrast slider or maybe the black point, you're, you could very easily introduce too much contrast into your photograph. So you wanna be careful using the, the, the haze tool, but it, it will add contrast to your photograph as it did in this image right here. So this is where we started. We add some dehaze and this is where we're at right now. So cut through the haze, added a lot of contrast and look what happens to the histogram. This is where we started. And if we put in negative dehaze, which is ultimately removing the contrast from the photograph, you can see that the histogram really contracts up there. Now, if we take the dehaze and we turn it all the way up, you notice that the histogram really spreads out. So there's that same theme reoccurring again. 
And then the fifth and final way to add contrast to your landscape photos using Lightroom is the tone curve. And it is by far the most powerful. It's gonna give you the most control also. It's also the most intimidating, especially if you've never used the tone curve before either. And my goal here today is to try and simplify it as much as possible to make you feel more comfortable testing it out if you've never tested it out before. So this is just an image of a grayscale. This scale represents the value, the tonal values of a histogram. On the extreme left, you have uh, true black. Then you have your midtones right through here. And on the right side, you have pure white. Let me close down the basic panel. We'll open up the tone curve. So the way the tone curve works, across the bottom here, you have the darkest values. Across the top up here, you have the lightest values, the brightest values. So this anchor point down here is in the extreme bottom left-hand corner, so that represents pure black. This anchor point up here is in the extreme top right-hand corner, and that's going to represent pure white. So I'm gonna take the pure white anchor up here and I'm gonna slide it all the way down to the bottom and it's gonna bring this line all the way down to the bottom with it and watch what happens to the overall photograph. All the way down and we're left with a black image. And because that line, that anchor line right here is all the way down on the bottom, resting on the bottom, which is all black value. So our entire image is now black. So let me take this, reset this. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. So we're gonna take the anchor point that's representing absolute black. And we're gonna drag this all the way up to the top. And it brought that line. You can see that line going all the way to the top with me. And now we're left with pure white. So that's just a good way to, to kind of get your feet wet a little bit of exactly how the, the, uh, the tone curve operates. So what you can also do is if we grab our color picker here, and if we hover it over this value right here, you can look in the histogram and you can see that it put an anchor point there. And if we move over here, you can see it put an anchor point to the corresponding tonal value of this region. And we can do the same thing over here. The anchor point represented now represents this tonal region. So if we want to affect only this area here, I can just click it. And if I wanna darken this area, I drag it down. If I wanna lighten this area, I'm gonna lift it up because lighting, light values are up the darker values are down. And if I bring it all the way to the bottom here, you'll notice that it turned completely black. Now, let's go, let's pick another area. Let's, uh, let me remove that anchor point. Let's pick this region here. I'm gonna click here. And if I wanna darken that area, I'm gonna drag it down. And if I take this area all the way to the, to the bottom, it's gonna take the entire line with it, ultimately making everything black. And if I do the, the opposite way, you can see it's gonna brighten that area. So that's just a good way to understand exactly how the tone curve operates just from a perspective of lightening and darkening specific tones. Now for a real life example, this image right here is grossly overexposed. So I'm going to uh, run through a very quick edit here just to fix it, to make it something we can at least work with. I am not going to touch anything with the contrast. I'm not gonna to touch the, the black slider. I'm not gonna do anything with clarity or dehaze because I only wanna use the tone curve to add contrast to this photograph. So now that we have a, a usable image to work with and the histogram looks a little bit normal, I'm gonna come down here to the tone curve. And a great way to start getting used to using the tone curve is by right through here, click on point curve right here. And Lightroom has these presets for you. So you can select medium contrast, and you can see that it puts a very subtle S curve that's going to provide medium contrast for this photograph. And if I change this to strong contrast, you can see that that S curve is now a little bit more exaggerated, which is providing more contrast. And I'll toggle this on and off. So this is where we started, and this is where we're at right now. So that right there added a lot more contrast to the photograph. And you might have heard people talk about the S curve in, in the tone curve, and that's the curve that's going to provide contrast to your photograph. Every image is gonna have a little bit different histogram or a different tone curve, so that S curve will look a little bit different for every image. But ultimately, that S curve is what is going to provide contrast to your photograph. So in this example right here, if we wanted to add more contrast to this photograph, I would take this anchor point here, and we would bring this down a little bit. We would darken the darker midtones and then maybe brighten the brighter midtones right through here. And let's toggle this on and off. That's off and this is on. So off, on. 
and that added a lot more contrast and the image is really starting to look quite a bit better. Now let's reset this and let's make a tone curve from scratch. And a great place to start doing this is like this. We're gonna put an anchor point right here in the center. I'm gonna come up here to the upper right hand corner where it intersects right here and put an anchor point there. And I'm gonna do the opposite down here in the bottom left hand corner where these lines intersect. I'm gonna put an anchor point there. And I'm gonna pull this anchor point down and you can see I was darkening the, the darker midtones. And I'm gonna bring this anchor point up a little bit, creating that S curve. And you can also move the center point, so I don't think you have to keep that locked in anywhere. I'm gonna probably bring that one down a little bit too. I'm gonna darken down the midtones a little bit more. Maybe bring that down just a touch. And let's toggle this effect on and off. So this is where we started, and this is where we're at right now. And watch the histogram. So this is where we began. You see how the histogram is kind of kind of crunched up a little bit. And then when we turn on our tone curve, you can see how the histogram expands up there. So that's kind of a, a quick crash course into how to use the tone curve. It's the name of the game with the tone curve, honestly, is subtlety. You can get, um, you, you can very easily go overboard and mess, well, you're not gonna mess up your photograph. You can always undo anything, but I'll show you what I mean real quick. You can take this anchor point and if you turn it up really high, I mean, you can see what it's doing to the photograph and you, you don't have to make big sweeping changes to affect your image. It's just, it's very subtle changes. But if you just focus on creating the S curve, that's gonna be a great place to begin adding contrast to your photographs using the tone curve. Then when you get a little bit more comfortable with it, then you can start to get creative and there's a lot of different ways you can get creative and kind of stylize your edits using the tone curve. So those are the five ways you can add contrast to your photographs uh, using Lightroom. I hope you're able to pick up um, at least one or maybe two new nuggets of information that you can apply to, to your photos moving forward. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week. Bye.